What's going on YouTube? I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I'm up kind of early today, uh, checking up on some news, um, doing some practicing. I just got off a, uh, a meeting call, so I'm being nice and productive today. I've, uh, I've got my coffee here. So that's always nice. I hope you guys are all doing well, staying safe um, during these times. Um, I have a few things I want to talk about. Uh, first of all, happy 4th of July weekend. Um, I hope you guys uh, had a good 4th of July. For those of you that are from America and celebrating Independence Day. Um, a few things I want to talk about today um, are, well, one, I have a few new mouthpieces coming in, which I talked about a few videos back if you want to uh, go check that out. Um, so side note on that, I actually ordered the wrong mouthpieces, two of the wrong mouthpieces, and I accidentally ordered the large bore shank instead of small bore mouthpieces that I wanted to get. So uh, that video is going to be postponed because it's going to take a few weeks. I have to return them, get the money back on that. It was just a stupid mistake on my part because I didn't read the Amazon description close enough. And the Dennis Wick products are all very similar. There's a difference between like AL and BL. I forgot the exact numbers, but, or the exact letters, but pretty much I messed up. Um, so, but I do have my custom mouthpiece is on its way, um, which I'll talk about in the future, but I actually don't want to talk about these trombones. I want to talk about bass trombone. Um, do you guys like my new headphones? Huh? Am I fashionable? Oh yeah. Um, do you guys like my background? Do you like my lights? Uh, yeah. Let me know. I kind of like this backdrop. It's kind of cool. Uh, I put these lights up myself. Wow. Um, so yeah, I want to talk about bass drum on mouthpieces. Um, the two bass drum on mouthpieces that I've been on, and I've talked about this in lots of videos on my YouTube page, uh, or YouTube channel. So I should say, um, I, ha I play in a Giddings and Webster Chinook, which is kind of similar to a Shilky 60. And then I play on a Greg Black 1GL.312 gold plated mouthpiece. I actually got this mouthpiece from Aiden Ritchie for anyone who watches this channel. So kind of fun fact about that. Anyways, um, I, I don't like switching gear. I don't like changing mouthpieces. I don't like doing all of those things. But I do use both of these mouthpieces. I don't just use one. Um, and the reason is this mouthpiece has become my jazz slash commercial slash big low bass trombone stuff like if I'm handed something and I'm playing like everything below F just having to pop that stuff out um, this is the mouthpiece I'm gonna use you can't really tell what the practice meet but <laughs> The, re the low register just feels incredible on this mouthpiece. So like I said, it's kind of become my jazz, commercial, um, beefy bass trombone mouthpiece. Like if I'm playing in a trombone choir and I'm given like a bass trombone two part, which is almost like a contra part, I'm gonna be on that mouthpiece. This has become my classical slash legit mouthpiece slash doubling mouthpiece. Ooh, what does that mean? So in my opinion, um, you people identify as, oh, I'm a bass trombone player. Oh, I'm a tenor trombone player. And there are many schools of thoughts on this. Some people don't even like using the word doubling, but at the end of the day, you are going to either call yourself, oh, I'm a bass trombonist and I double on tenor, or I'm a tenor trombonist and I double on the bass trombone. Um, that's just something that I've noticed. Um, and if you disagree with me, that's fine. But my school of thought is for myself, I'm a bass trombone player that doubles on tenor trombone. Um, and because of that, I'm having to switch rims a lot. There's a huge difference between a bass trombone mouthpiece, a large bore mouthpiece, and a small bore mouthpiece. And I just happen to have all these right here. Um, so th there's a big difference, and that can create some problems um, when you're doubling a lot if you're not keeping up on it. 
Now, um, during the school year, I'm very busy. I work as a elementary and middle school and sometimes high school band director. Um, and during those times, I can't keep my good bass trombone chops up, AKA this mouthpiece. So I've now dubbed this my doubling mouthpiece and dubbed this my bass trombone chops are feeling really, really good mouthpiece. Um, Cause I don't know if you can tell over the camera, um, there is actually quite a bit of a size difference between these two. Um, it's not much, but it's just enough for me to feel it where if I play a middle partial B flat, and then switch mouthpieces, I can feel a huge difference. I'm actually working harder on my upper register with this mouthpiece which makes this mouthpiece a little more versatile. But I like my low register when my chops are feeling very good on this mouthpiece. So this is usually the mouthpiece I play most of the time, but right now, um, because I'm practicing a lot, I'm practicing a lot of tenor trombone, um, I've been on this mouthpiece for um, when I'm not just doing bass trombone things. Um, and it usually just depends on how my chops feel. So that's just kind of a, mental note for myself making this video and for anyone else that might double you need to find what works for you because if you're like if you're like me and playing a lot of tenor you call for some bass trombone you're using this toilet bowl mouthpiece and your sound isn't good you're not projecting your low register doesn't sound good no, nothing sounds good it's going to cause problems when you actually get called for some work because at the end of the day, your goal is to make music and it's what comes out of the bell. And if what's coming out of the out of the bell is being affected by your mouthpiece, you need to find something that works for you. For me, if I am not feeling great, I go to this mouthpiece. If I'm feeling good, I go to that mouthpiece. Um, but if you're keeping up with your, with your stuff, you can find that one mouthpiece and just stick with it. Um, which I actually recommend doing. That's what I usually do with my other horns. Um, so yeah, that's what I want to say about bass drum and mouthpieces. Um, like I said earlier, uh, this is a, another mental note for myself and to let you guys know what's going on with me um, so you can kind of know what's going to be happening in the future with the channel, things to look forward to, maybe things not to look forward to. Um, I just got off a Zoom meeting with my uh, boss and... Um, my hours are going up like crazy, ironically, e even with the coronavirus and everything, um, the programs I'm working for are moving forward as normal. So um, for me, it's a lot of extra hours, uh, which is very good for uh, multiple reasons. Um, but like I said in another video, while a few, a few back, if you want to take a look at it, my freelance career, I'm going to kind of be put, start, start pushing back on for multiple reasons. And I talk about that in a vi early video if you want to go check that out. But um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, I, I'm contemplating um, whether I want to start posting um, like band director tips on this video. Um, if anyone out there teaches and wants some pointers for teaching band please let me know leave a comment i can start making some of those um i know a lot i've been teaching quite a while um so i know a thing or two when it comes to organizing a band uh doing all that nitty-gritty stuff how to classroom management um how to specifically teach certain things um and yeah so that's just a cool update on myself um and then another thing i'm thinking of is um i've been studying with the same teacher for uh ever since I've been playing trombone. Um, and his teaching goes back to um, Bob Sanders and Craig Ware. Um, Bob Sanders was the principal trombonist for the Pacific Symphony and has also played on lots of movie recordings. Um, and Craig Ware used to be the bass trombonist for uh, Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band. So it's all stuff out here in Los Angeles. Uh, Craig also is also an incredible freelancer and teacher does a lot of recording and is uh, actually still working to this day. But my bass drum on roots go back to that, but um, I'm actually thinking about trying to get some lessons with Alex Isles. Um, and that's just a side note for myself. Um, that's a goal I want to have is at some point study with him because his teaching goes back to um, Roy Main, who taught so many 
all the top LA musicians and so many incredible uh, trombonists. Um, and Alex is just, if none of you who know who Alex Isles is, I would recommend looking him up. Um, he's just an incredible, one of the best musicians in the entire world, in my opinion, one of the best trombonists, one of the most versatile, versatile musicians in the entire world. Um, but luckily I have his like cell phone and stuff and I've, I've had the privilege of getting to meet him and, um, and, um, am interested in taking lessons with him at some point. So, um, uh, just some cool things I want to mention. Um, and of course, if I do that, I'm going to be making videos about that. Um, so you guys can get some cool stuff from that too. Um, but anyways, that's, uh, that's it for this video. If you liked this video, uh, give it a like. If you don't like me talking, leave a dislike and go watch some of my playing videos. I have uh, almost a thousand videos posted on YouTube of me playing. So if you uh, want to hear me play, go look at some old videos. Um, if you're interested in taking private lessons for myself, there's a link in the description. Um, anything else? Yeah, and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, yeah, so take care, guys. Hope you're all doing safe. And I hope you guys have a great day.